St. John Newman came to the United States as an immigrant. He, was, uh, he wanted to be a priest, and at that time in, in Europe, he wasn't able to be ordained, so he wrote to the bishops in the United States and came to the United States uh, to be ordained. And upon his entry here, when he got to New York, he, uh, he was a man of great faith because he, he basically came and had nothing in his pocket and arrived in New York City with papers saying that he would, had been prepared for ordination and he had to seek a bishop. He had to find a place to live. He had to do all of these things. And um, after being ordained a priest, he, uh, he, he, went about, he went about it with great zeal and great, um, but he kind of tired himself out and realized he can't do this on his own. And that's, I think, what led him to religious life um, was to be around other people and do that. So when he came to the Redemptorist, um, he found in our charism something that spoke to his heart. And I think it was that missionary zeal and that passion that he had to seek out the abandoned and, and the poor. And um, his life as a redemptorist, he exemplified all the things of our charism. He, uh, he did go out of his way to seek. He went for miles on horseback and crossed over what seems to us now like how did somebody have that kind of energy to do that to get up and to to seek you know going to these places and to do all these things that he did um but he never lost who he was and his kindness and i think that to me is a, i love about saint john newman is um the stories of like he and father silos when father silos were they lived together and um Father Silas wrote some things about John Newman that tells us a bit of his character. And one of those things was the, um, I love this story that when they went on their first mission, they went to a town and uh, there was no room for them basically in the inn. So they had to sleep in the, in the uh, lobby and there was only one place for them to sleep. So John Newman gave up his place to this younger priest for him to sleep and covered him with his own coat. And when he woke up in the morning, he was shocked that, that John Newman had given him, not only covered him with his coat, but that he was there praying his rosary and had made sure that Father Silos was well taken care of. I think that sort of exemplifies who he was as a person. The other story that Father Silos told about John Newman was that when they all lived together um, in Pennsylvania, that uh, I think it was Pennsylvania or Baltimore, um, but that every morning he was the superior of the house. He would get up and he would light a coal stove because it was cold in the morning and he would get up every morning and he would, before all the other conifers got up, get the fire going so that by the time they woke up, the house would be warm. So I, those kinds of just simple kindnesses, I think, is what makes people a saint. It's the little simple things. Um, he took on some pretty big things. He took on the, uh, the church in Philadelphia who wanted to be more. They wanted this glorious sort of church. They wanted to be, um, they wanted to be the center of American Catholicism. And really, I think at that time, um, against New York. And they, he was not interested in that. They wanted to build a cathedral. He was not, in, he was interested in their, in their project, but it didn't have his heart. His heart remained in building a structure to serve the poor and the abandoned. His heart was in reaching the common person. His heart was reaching out to these immigrants that were just sort of being cast aside because they were, they were nothing. And he, he went out of his way to do that. Um, and he never lost that zeal for work, 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 which ultimately leads to his death. He's, in a sense, almost a workaholic because um, when he dies, he's on his way to send a chalice to a priest in a missionary part of his diocese so that the Eucharist can be celebrated there. So that these people that nobody cares about outside of the big city, out in the country, can have Eucharist. That kind of defines who he is. And um, he himself being an immigrant, he, he learned all these different languages. It was easy for him to communicate in his own language, but he chose to go outside of his own culture, to go outside of his own language and his own understanding to meet people where they were. Just just to communicate. What, what's your story? Who are you? Where do you come from? And let me tell you about Jesus. That's who he was. I think what we can learn from him today is simply that dialogue, that dialogue with the stranger.
that other culture, to cross out of the um, comfort zones that we live in and, and meet people where they are. Now, it's always difficult when you cross a language barrier or a cultural barrier because you're a foreigner. You're Abraham in another land. And I think that's what we can learn from him. Um, he spoke all sorts of different languages. He crossed over many cultures and it enriched him and made him a saint. So I think that's what we can learn from him. If we want to be holy, if we want to be disciples of Jesus, we need to cross over those barriers and meet people where they're at.